Hanoi from a motorbike. It's a pretty crazy, unusual experience. Actually, it's kind of thrilling. It's kind of exciting. And I don't think this is the worst of the traffic, so we're getting off lightly. One of the great senses you get here is of, is of real kind of life. It's a bit like India in that Hanoi lives in its streets. There's everything to look at all the time in these places. It's so colorful, so energetic. And I think being on a scooter and riding through the town, really, you get a sense of that energy and, and of that Vietnamese life. We're heading off to this Long Bien Bridge. It's, it's not a place that many people go to, apparently, but we've heard about it. It's, it's a key priority target during the Vietnam War, apparently, but it did pretty well at keeping itself open, or at least the Vietnamese did a good job of keeping it open despite repeated bombardments. And today, I think about 15,000 people go across it every day. Um, cars aren't allowed, but scooters and trains uh, cross this thing every day. And uh, as we cross it, you'll get a sense for, for what it was like, I guess, back in the day when it was used by old Vietnamese in the early 1900s. When this was first built, it was one of the longest bridges in the world. And I think at the time, when it was uh, not being destroyed by American bombs, it was about two and a half kilometers long, making it the longest in Asia. At the time of construction, the Red River was considered uncrossable, actually. Um, when people first supported plans or suggested plans to build a bridge across it, they were told you couldn't do it. And it was a really important uh, route of transport and supply for Hanoi, linking it to nearby ports, and four big railways came and met together at this bridge as well. Um, hence, such an important strategic military target. It was these parts that would have been destroyed first, probably, by the first fighters that came in. And it was rebuilding these that the Vietnamese actually used US prisoners of war to ensure that while it was being repaired, it wasn't bombed again. People could probably skip this part of the tour, yeah. But this is bits people don't see often, so hell, why not? It's built by the same guy that built the Eiffel Tower, apparently, or at least his architectural firm. As you can see, the Eiffel Tower influence is very heavy in, in all the architecture, particularly the bits that are still standing. A lot of this has been rebuilt since it was destroyed, but if you take a walk across it, those big bits that are standing are still more than 100 years old, and you can really see that Eiffel influence in, in, in the engineering. I mean, it's, it's well known, you can do a search and it's kind of in a few of the tour guides, but it doesn't seem to be a major tourist attraction. It's still a functioning bridge. It's its main point of use is to get people across the river. Um, but you can see it looks awesome. So yeah, more people should come and have a look. Um, 50,000 down a, a bunch but, but I, I ask uh, how many flowers in the bunch they said 29 and a half I, said, I asked why is half <laughs> this is quite funny <laughs> the life here is kind of simple they sell everything on the street <laughs> This street is called Bao Khánh and um, it's a small street and uh, it's always crowded like this until 5 in the morning, until late at 9 and um, you can find almost all things here. Even in small but it's a lot of cafe, a lot of restaurant for, for uh, local people. This is mushroom, chicken and noodle and um, chicken boil, like soup, soup. Uh, chị đã nấu cái món này bao nhiêu năm rồi chị? Chị bán ở đây. Wow, almost my age, 30 years. What's her secret? Bí quyết thì là người Việt Nam không thể nói được. Oh, she, 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 will, she wants to keep that. This, this is called bún mọc, noodle. And it's kind of common breakfast for Hanoi people. Oh, 
ơi em để ý trong nhà. Em ơi, các chị ba ly cà phê I read in the newspaper a lot of, of, um, of the famous singer in other country they don't have their, their privacy and difficult for them and for their family but we don't have that here and it's kind of peace here I, I like that peaceful here I think Hano is still a little bit conservative compared to other cities we don't accept a lot a change a lot I think that a part that I do and I don't like in of Hanoi. Long time ago, when um, Vietnam uh, still uh, banned by um, the World Trade, it was very diff difficult time for us. We didn't have enough food to eat. That's why I think it um, is influenced to our character. My music is similar. Um, Western music, but we mix uh, our traditional um, way and thinking and lyrics, so it's called pop Vietnamese. <laughs> It's a very nice country to share, to learn, and change a little bit about the, who we are and what, what we can do. Next month, we head to Beijing. Show us the hidden side of the Chinese capital. Head to cnngo.com slash TV.